Another thing to consider when you are breaking a monolith into these different services is to consider the service level agreements when you're composing services that have dependencies between each other. That's what I talk about on this slide here. You know, you have your customers that are sitting on the planet and they're trying to make network requests into your service. Now, if you are offering a 99.99% you know, uptime for your service level agreement of this service, that really equates to your service being down no more than 260 seconds per month. If you want to try to offer 99.999% uptime for your service, that is equivalent of your service being down no more than 26 seconds per month. So again, you know, running multiple instances of this service greatly helps increase the chance of you meeting any service level agreement that you're trying to offer to customers. But now, if you've split this service into multiple services that have a dependency between each other, and so now, while you're, uh, if each of these services has a 99.99%, that means you're really, because of the dependency, you're at now at 99.98% of a service level agreement. So you would have to work harder now in order to achieve the desired 99.99% from the service, from the consumer's perspective. Okay. And if you're at 99.98%, that means you now have a downtime of possibly 520 seconds per month. So in other words, this service could be down 260 seconds per month, and this service could be down at a completely different 260 seconds per month. But if the two services have a dependency on each other, that means that if either one is down, they look like they're down to your customer over here, that means you're now at 520 seconds per month. And on the bottom row, I again show what you would happen if you were trying to promise a higher level of SLA and what it really means to you if you link these together, these multiple dependent services. Now, if you've even go for so far as to split your service, your monolith, into not just two services, but three services, well, now you end up that each one of these could be down at 260 seconds per month at different times during the month. And now that means that from the outside view of your customer, you would have downtime of now up to 780 seconds per month, you know, or 78 seconds per month if each one of these services was trying to offer 99.999% uptime. And then if you go so far as to do, you know, n services, the formula is 99.99 to the nth power or n times 260 seconds per month, you know, or if you're trying to reach 99.99% of the time. So in other words, offering or maintaining your service level agreement becomes much harder when you split a monolith into multiple services. But wait, if you act now, it actually gets worse because this is just the uptime of the services themselves. But what about the network connection between those services? Is there an SLA for the routers? Is there an SLA for the wires and the communication between them? There usually is no published SLA about these kinds of things. And so it really is introducing another amount of randomness, if you will, or unknownness, unpredictability into the running of the services, which you have no guarantee on. And so it just makes it even that much harder for you to offer a service level agreement to your customers when you split your service up into lots of different microservices. So let me just be clear. I'm not saying don't split your service up into microservices. I'm saying you should have a good reason to do it. And I gave four reasons to do it a couple slides back. Um, but realize that when you do it, there are going to be some other trade-offs that you make from doing it.